This is John Gallant. I finally got my How to Create the Microsoft Glass Wave logo with Fusion 360 blog post up, so I thought I'd spend a few minutes to show you how I created it. This is the original picture that I saw on my Twitter feed, and this is my version created with Fusion 360. I went through a couple of iterations to create this. The first one was to create the yellow paint first, to copy it, flip it to create the red. I created the blue, and then I copied that and flipped it to create the green, but it was really difficult to get everything lined up. So eventually what I did is I created a single sketch along this curve, and then I copied it to this plane, and then I did a sweep command from this sketch along the path. I cut it in four, then colored it, rendered it, and got my final image. And to do that, I, I used some basic tools of Fusion 360, some sketches, construction lines, uh, rectangles, splines, sweep, split body, fillet, and, and the rendering environment. My blog goes through step-by-step -step on how to create this. Um, so you can follow along there. Uh, the URL for that is bit.ly, bit.ly, msft logo f360 and that will get you this. And if you have any questions about any of this, just feel free to comment on my blog. Any questions about Fusion 360, feel free to reach out to Taylor. Uh, he's been immensely helpful in this, in this entire process. And if you wanna see my, my research that led up to me choosing Fusion 360, you can go to my blog. You just search for Fusion 360, or you can go to this URL up here, and that just brings you through all the, the pros and cons of each of these uh, software options that I went through. All right, so let's get into Fusion and design this thing. So Fusion 360, first thing I'm gonna do is create a rectangle. Start at my center point. I'm gonna create a, let's just say a 40 by four millimeter rectangle. Okay, so this is gonna be, um, eventually it's gonna be construction lines for our spline. And the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, draw a line from the center point here to 10 millimeters. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is draw another line from here to 30. So what this is going to do is going to allow us to create that wave shape. This wave right here is a spline. I need some points uh, so I can get a consistent curvature to this shape. So imagine there's a rectangle around that face. And so back to fusion, that spline is gonna go from here to here to here, down to here, and then back up to the middle. But we don't want these lines to interfere with the actual you know, shape. We just want them to be reference points. So what we can do is we can select all of those lines. And then in your sketch palette, you have normal slash construction. We just click on construction. And then from there, what we can do is we can use the spline tool, select the middle there, and then we want to go up to this point. And you notice it's not snapping, but if you go down and then go up, it's going to snap. Okay. Same thing here. See, it's not snapping. We already have a, a, a midpoint anchor there, so we can go down and then slide it up. Same thing here, go down. Lock it in here, and it will snap to the middle. Now that's the face. Remember, this is the face of that curvature. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw a height to this shape. And we're going to do that from each of these points. And then we're going to draw another spline on top of that. So I'm going to go to the line tool. I'm going to select this point here. And I'm just going to go up by, let's say, uh, let's call it four. Okay, so we have a line there. If you, I just right click, drag up, automatically selects repeat line. Do the same thing from here. All right, then we'll draw a spline from each of these, but we do not want these lines to interfere with our spline. If that would happen, it would cut the face into one, two, three, four sections. So what we wanna do is uh, just turn those into construction lines, just the ones in the middle, because we still want the ones uh, the lines on the end to form our face. So after you've drawn your four 
millimeter lines and read them as construction lines, the ones in the middle, you're going to want to go back to spline and just draw a new spline and that will create your face and you'll see it in orange. That is the face here. Now what we want to do is we want to create that same face on this other side so that we can sweep it to create the entire shape. Uh, so I didn't know this before I started doing this particular design, but you can actually copy and paste sketches. So back into Fusion 360, I'm going to click Stop Sketch. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to copy it onto this plane going this way. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to click Spline and then select this plane. And so that's going to create it against this wall. Uh, so what I want to do is select all of this geometry. I'm going to hit control C to copy all of that. And I'm going to select anywhere just to, just to deselect that. And then if I hit control V, it's going to copy that. I'm just going to click OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to execute the sweep command. So what sweep does, sweeps the sketch profile or plane our face along a selected path. So what we're going to do is take this face, sweep it along this path. So let's choose sweep. Let's choose this face. Go over here and select path. And you'll notice um, that it created that shape. So the next thing we want to do is we want to cut this thing into four pieces. And you can do that using the uh, modify split body command. So what that will do is it will take a body and split it by a plane. What we can do is create those planes. In the construct menu item, you have a mid plane. What that does is it creates a plane uh, at the midpoint between two faces of an object. So if you click on mid plane and then you select this side and then rotate. And to rotate, I'm just doing shift and then middle mouse button. And I'm just selecting the other side. So it created a plane there. I want to create a plane that is perpendicular to that. So I'll do another mid plane, select this side, rotate it around and select that side. Under the modify menu, we're going to select split body. We're going to select our body. We're going to select our splitting tool. It's going to be this plane, the mid plane that we just created. Click OK here. So now we have two parts. We want four. Modify again, split body. We want to split both of them by this plane. Select them both, hold it using the shift key, select that plane, click OK. Okay, so now we have our four parts. What I'm gonna do is hide those planes. The next step is just create a little bit of padding in between these uh, four shapes here. So I'm just going to select the move tool. Select these two here, and then just drag it out by say one, uh, negative one, negative one. Yeah. Select these two guys, and let's just do negative one. Before we get into the color, I want to do one more thing. I want to create a little bit of a, a fillet on each of these uh, edges, just to just to make it look more like the original. You know, the original back here has a little bit of a rounded corner. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we select the, under modify, you have the fillet command. Select that, and I'm just going to drag select here. And my radius, I'm going to just do a 0.2 and see how that looks. Or a 0.3 if you like. All right, that looks pretty good. Just click OK. So there you have it. That's the the finalized geometry for the, the uh, Microsoft Wave Glass logo. So at the top of the screen, you have the model menu. Under that, you click on Render. Now, this is the Fusion rendering environment where you can make your objects you know, appear like natural materials with texture like glass and metal. Uh, so for this, we're going we're gonna to do it as glass. Click on the Appearance menu item. I'm going to go to Glass, Smooth. And the Microsoft logo is red, green, blue, and yellow. Okay, so red. Blue. Green. And then for yellow, I'm just going to do clear. 
And then if you right click here, you can go edit and just drag yellow. Right click on it. So we have our colors. I'm just going to go through and edit these colors just to be more uh, just pure colors. Zero there. And then we'll do green. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go and click on enable ray tracing. I'm not going to do that right now just because it's resource intensive and I, I can't run both screen recording software and that at the same time. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you how to get that nice clean glass look and then we'll do an actual cloud render. Um, so if you, you click on the uh, scene settings dialog, that will pull up this dialog here. We want to keep to sharp highlights. Uh, we want to increase the brightness. I, th I think we'll go you know, roughly around like 2000. And for position, you notice that the gray starts to come through right there. Make sure that doesn't happen. And then you can change the direction of the light. So you can kind of make it you know, reflect into your object however you like. Um, I, I kind of like you know, something like maybe, maybe something like that. Um, and for background, I just choose environment. You could do a solid color. Uh, for for ground, we're, we're going to show the reflections, but we're going to show them as, as uh, pretty rough. For camera, we'll select a, a 70 millimeter. And for exposure, Last time I set it up, it looked good at 8.9. Um, just close this out. So whenever you save your document, it automatically kicks off the first cloud rendering. So let's just go ahead and save that. So this button right here is cloud rendering. This uses the Autodesk cloud to render these high quality images. So you see there are renderings in progress. If you want to re-render, you just click uh, cloud rendering. Final, advanced, PNG is kind of what I go for when I'm looking for, uh, you know, my final image. Uh, so I'm just going to click on close. And then you'll start to see them come in down at the bottom there. This bar down here, the progress bar shows you how long it's going to take. You can also view all your renderings out on the Autodesk website at rendering.360.autodesk.com slash my gallery. You can see your PNGs. You can download them all. Uh, to later embed in whatever kind of uh, project you need to include them in. Let's go back to Fusion 360 and just kind of take a look at our our new render here. So this is it. This is, I, I think, something to be proud of. It's a cool design. You know, it looks amazing in Fusion 360. I, I love how I just I just learned a ton about Fusion 360. I learned a lot about the scene settings, the lighting. I learned about how you know sketches and mid planes, you know, splines and construction lines. I mean, there's so much that went into you know creating this. I, I just feel like uh, you know it's a great learning experience, and I hope you feel so too.